Hello, everybody. Please forgive me my mistakes when trying to speak English. This is not my natural language. Okay. Well, today I will try to give you a glimpse about centrality measures. Centrality measures are very powerful because we can get a lot of information of relationship data among several kinds of objects. For example, our contacts in the internet, in social media. But my main focus here is to show you how centrality measures can be used to search for new vaccine candidates, for example, okay? Well, for doing that, I will show you a small sample. This presentation should not take much longer because this is a very simple example and will be enough for all of you have a clear view what about I'm talking to. Well, let me show you. I have here in this folder a lot of files but I will start with this simple file. This is a dot file. This is one of the most simple ways to construct a graph. So here I have a lot of objects. I don't care what about means A, B, C, D. It could be a person, it could be a computer, anything you want. They are entities that are related. The way that they are related is defined by this two minus sign. It means a relation between the entity A and the entity B and the entity A and the entity C and so on. Looking for these relations separately, we can't have any clues about what kind of network is here. But when you start a program like Gepi opening this file, the things start to change. Well, the first thing that Gepi told us is that we have 11 nodes or vertices and 12 edges. I will start this small toy of a graph in the new workspace. Let's say that those relationships I show you a few seconds ago had weights. If it was the case, we could command the gap tool to sum those weights in case we find two relationships two or more relationships between A and B, for instance, okay? This small toy that I will open here does not have weights associated to the edge, so such a configuration is not important. Well, let's open the new workspace. Whoa. Now we have a lot of dots connected by edges. Looking this graph is very difficult to find out some structural information. We need to apply a layout for this graph. In Gap, we have a lot of layout options. For example, I like a lot of this Yan Fan Hu layout. Let's see what happens. Wow, very more interesting, don't you think? Now we have a central dot connecting two small clusters of dots. We can find a lot of structural information with this graph looking for the statistics. Let's see this menu. For example, we can find out the average degree. Let's see that. 
Here we have six nodes with a degree of two. One node with a degree of two and so on. Okay. We now can discriminate these nodes using a small trick of Kepi that is to color each node according to the partition. Let's see that. Let's choose an attribute. The only attribute we have until now is the degree. We can apply, for example, this partition according to the number of edges entering or leaving each node. For example, now we have the nodes colored by the number of edges. Another possibility is to rank all the nodes according to degree. For example, using this scale from white to a dark green, we can color all the nodes according to the largest number of degree. The largest number of edges are found in this vertex. Because of that, we have a more dark green related to this node. The other nodes with smaller number of nodes than this one have a slightly more clear green color. Okay, let's see now the data laboratory. The data laboratory gives us information about the data associated with our graph. For example, here I have the node A with degree 4, B with degree 2, and so on. Here we can have a lot of data associated with each vertice or even with each edge. In this graph, the only information associated until now is the degree because I asked Gabby to calculate the degree and after that we have the degree incorporated to the data laboratory. Now I will ask Gabby to calculate another centrality measure called Bridging Centrality. Let's see that. The number of calculations made by this algorithm can be tremendous according to the number of edges and nodes we have in our graphs. But how I told you before, this is a very simple graph, so the time to computation was very simple. Now, in the data laboratory, we have more data associated with each node. Now we have the between centrality. We can sort the data according to each attribute. Uh, and the predicting centrality is the main focus of our analysis right now. But before I talk to you about the bridging centrality, I should introduce you other measures that are necessary to calculate the bridging centrality. I already show you the degree centrality. Now I will talk to you about the bridging coefficient. The bridging coefficient is the opposite of the degree centrality. Let me show you. For example, if I apply a ranking call to this graph based on the bridging coefficient, we have this visual output. You can note that the nodes possessing the smaller number of edges are the most colored ones. That's because we have in the bridging coefficient the 
inverse of the degree i will show you once more the degree ranking can you see now that the nodes possessing the larger number of edges are the most colored ones the between centrality is a more complicated centrality measure to explain because it takes into account all possible paths connecting the nodes of this graph literally talking about all possibilities to connect any pair of nodes depending on the size of the graph this number of possibilities to traverse the graph to connect any arbitrary pair of nodes can be enormous the between centrality will consider the number of these paths traversing a specific node divided by all possibilities of traversing the network connecting a pair of vertices so it's a kind of normalization it gives us a perspective of how important a node is for this graph according to the number of possible ways to traverse the graph connecting any pair of points. You can see here in the graph that this node is very important concerning the possibilities to traverse the graph connecting any kind of pairs. This is the reason why this dot is the most dark green in the graph. This is the most important dot in the graph connecting all possible pairs of nodes. Well, say that, let me talk about the bridging in centrality. The bridging in centrality is a measure resulted by the multiplication of between the centrality and bridging in coefficient. Now we have the most green dark dot here, meaning that this is the node that acts like a bridge connecting clusters of nodes that's exactly the case of this central dot here here we have two small clusters of dots and this central dot have the row to connect both clusters so we can clearly see that this is the product of between centrality and bridging in coefficient because we have an inverse degree multiplied by the between centrality this dot have both characteristics is very important to traverse the path it is very important to traverse the graph connecting any pair of dots at the same time it has one of the smallest number of edges not necessarily the smallest one of those smallest and also is very important according to between centrality we saw before that this node here is the most important for between centrality this one have a significant value for between centrality despite it's not the most significant i told you that my main focus is a biological point of view talking about interaction networks of proteins if we consider a network like that one can think about this dot like a protein and this protein can have a very important biological role to connect, for example, two molecular processes. Let's assume that these two clusters represent proteins associated with two different molecular processes. And let's suppose that a bacteria needs one protein to connect these two clusters these two process supposing that such a kind of dependence it exists for these two clusters 
when can imagine it, the possibility to block this process neutralizing this protein if you think about this process like a disease for example one can think that if i neutralize this gene this protein i can neutralize the disease of the bacteria so neutralizing the bacteria disease we can use this bacteria for example to construct a vaccine a vaccine of a bacteria capable to alarm our immunological system but not capable to cause the disease because we had neutralized the two more important process for the disease characterization well this is a very simple example we all know that uh, genome have several thousands of genes we cannot expect to find just a single gene as the main connector of just two processes that can neutralize the disease but let's suppose you can have the success to identify several genes with very important bridging roles we can have a chance against the bacteria this is not a simple task it demands a lot of research and not only bioinformatic research all that you predict here in the computer is just the beginning to be proved in the wet lab i used to call this the dry lab and the dry lab is too today for the wet lab is here that we are looking clues about what genes we need to study in a set of several thousands of genes and clues like this can be very precious it can save us a lot of time of money for now it's all people thank you for your attention bye bye